performance. Yay. Hello, Perfites, and uh, welcome to this special report directly from Star East report. 2024. It's 24. He almost said 2023. <laughs> uh, welcome, everyone, and um, this is a yearly experience that I think, uh, other than some weddings, uh, the only occasions that I see you anymore. Since the pandemic. Yeah. Because we, well, we had a Uruguay encounter. Oh, that's right. We saw each Whopper. other in Uruguay. That was nice. Yeah. That was fantastic. And we then did. I missed out on Chile. So yeah. shout out to Antonio for that. But Colombia, maybe? I think I'm going to be in Colombia. Oh, yeah. for Because there will be a Whopper, I believe. Oh, yeah. In, in Colombia in October. Mm-hmm. En Español. But, uh, Just beware. Uh, it's Colombian Spanish Whopper community. Uh, the performance Illuminati of the... <laughs> I'm just going to show up for uh, moral support, emotional support, He's even if I don't understand anything in Espanol. <laughs> He's going to give us the blessings and say, you are good to perform. And I'll just sit in the corner and be like, si. Mate, por favor. Si. <laughs> that's Muy all bueno. I'll say. <laughs> bueno, si. No, actually, that's going to be an, an excellent event. Yeah. Uh, if Federico or Mercedes are watching this, Mark already said yes, he's interested, so beware. <laughs> I may have to, like, translate my a talk for QS. I may have to translate into Spanish and then memorize it in Spanish. And I may have to memorize it in Spanish, and I don't actually know what I'm saying in Spanish. Huh. But I could, like, memorize the words yeah. and say them, even though they're not the words that I would say in English. We can get you a teleprompter. Oh, I could have a teleprompter, yeah. Uh -huh. All right, and then just sort of phonetically sp speak them. Ah, that would be cool. No, no, not phonetically. Los performance test tool. Los, not los. Ah, uh, whatever, I don't know. I like that. I like yes, that pronunciation. So, so we are here at Star <laughs> East. <laughs> and um, first of all, we just uh, got off. It's almost end of Tuesday, second day of it Star East. Not the conference, but the tutorials. Tutorials. And uh, we both uh, did our usual... Carnage of tutorials. Yours uh, is the modern performance. Yep. Which is usually a full day. You condensed it to a half day. No, it's usually a half day, but I'm discovering that I need a full day. You need a full day for yeah. it because you keep adding things to it. Yeah. And yeah. people keep asking things. Yeah. And it's something that uh, we cannot stop and a topic that I wanted also to bring up because I think the theme or motto for the conference this year has been AI. And yeah. Well, it's AI con right there on the sign behind us. Uh, if Check you have a chance, also uh, go to the AI Con in Vegas yeah. in June 5, if I'm right. Do we have the dates? We there? don't know. It doesn't even say on the sign. But there is no, AI Con. June 2 7. June 2 to 7. Yeah. There you go. Uh, don't miss it out if you want to learn more about AI, all the trends. Not only testing, not only DevOps, it's everything AI. Yep. Get ready for that conference. That's going to be big. But still, uh, everything is permea per permeating. Is that a word? Yeah. Permeating. Uh, Thank you. But it's into your... So what kind of AI question did you get for performance? So uh, there was this person that was like, it's not so related to the tutorial, but I'm curious how AI can uh, intersect with performance testing. And I'm like, oh, hold my perf coffee, because of course has no whiskey or anything on it. Maybe tequila. No, I'm kidding. Uh, perf coffee. <laughs> we've, uh, we've done a lot of perf things, but not perf coffee. Good. I have. Yeah. Yeah. I'll show you the mugs. All right. There are some mugs. And in my opinion, some interesting things that you can do or get a benefit as a performance engineer with AI are several. First of all, okay. having some information or recordings for the application that tested. What was UAT? Uh, application under test? AUT. AUT application, yeah, application under test under or system test. under test. System yeah. under test. Uh, having some recordings and some logs of uh, what is the HTTP request, response, the cookies, all that. Have like a big sample and feed it to a machine learning. Uh, so like, hey, learn about this. Tell me the differences. Which ones may be parameters? Which, may, which ones may be correlations needed? Okay. And make my life easier as a person that still have to reverse engineer things. and The... the biggest pain in any transport level tool is always that correlating yeah one recept receive one response from one thing gets the fit into that so figuring out that pattern matching mm -hmm. which ones of these fields are dynamic and i could just automatically correlate for them for you 
Yeah. Uh, old Load Runner, we had the Correlation Studio. Some of the other tools. The Correlation like, Rules yeah. try to do something yeah, like yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. Rules or something like that in Load Runner were really important. But again, having AI do that would be nice. And it is pattern matching. That's a good, that's actually a good machine learning challenge. And uh, I would add an extra step. Generate the correlation instructions. And that the AI asks, like, for what tool? Oh, so it's an agnostic thing. Uh-huh. It would be specific to one tool. Yeah, I suppose the the application doesn't care what tool you're using. So it can hey, just w- w- let load me runner. Describe. Okay, do you want a regular expression or do you want left and right bracket? Left and right boundaries. Mm. What's the payload? If the payload's XML, it's one regex. If it's JSON, it's another. If it's just text, yeah. Who? Last night we were talking to Philip. Was it? Yeah, that was sitting with us. Who's working on the AI browser? Replay AI. Replay uh, IO. Replay IO. Yeah. Um, so maybe we need him to include that, right? That would be very, very cool. That's a thought right. that I was having. Yeah. Second one, how about you get you let loose your machine learning engine on your utilization patterns on your production system? And now that's a I'm little bit to? different, yeah. So you think about some of the observability tools, the platforms mm-hmm. that we're familiar with, your honeycombs, your uh, New Relic Splunk has a bunch of this with their AI add-in. Uh, Dynatrace, Dynatrace for sure. Uh, but you think about those using, it, like they coming up with anomaly detection and trying to determine out of the box what is anomalous. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things that they that you see in a lot of the tools is sort of the auto baselining uh, or the idea that it'll watch things for seven days and and then if it changes, plus or minus 10% or 20% could be response time, exception rates, CPU utilization, whatever the metric is, if the metric changes enough, it'll be like, hey, Leandro, this is anomalous. Let me send you an alert. Are you talking about use patterns or response times and system metrics? Any metrics. So Cause it's because to the AI, it's just a number. It's just a like, big variation of Like 0 yeah. to 100 is percent utilization of network. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's just between 0 and 100. And every day it's about 20%. And then on Thursday it goes to 40%. That's anomalous. Like it just knows on the regression, statistically speaking, that's anomalous. Mm-hmm. But let's say for that first 7 or 10 days where it's learning your system. Yeah. What if unbeknownst to the AI bot that you have deployed for anomaly detection, Mm -hmm. it doesn't know that things are really crappy for the business. That's the reference point. Like, the reference point is, well, I thought 85% was the norm. Yeah. And suddenly you fix the system, what becomes... Making it better becomes the anomaly. Mm Mm-hmm. So you got to be really aware of, like, hey, if we're going... When you first start doing performance tuning, usually things are not great. Mm-hmm. No, so, and, and, and yeah, massive. auto baselining for AI and anomaly detection for AI is like a, there's an interesting double edged sword of that. Massive improvements in performance are also like something things like whoa, that cannot be that good. Something's wrong. Yeah, right. A four hundred four response is really fast. It's really fast, and yeah, but or, it's a four hundred four, <laughs> or even can be a two hundred. But the response is like yeah, you couldn't log in. Sorry. Yeah, but it came back. It didn't do any work. So an HTTP two hundred. So. That's good testing practice for exceptions. So that's good. I think still, um, keep in mind, I'll say one thing. Um, Jason Arbon gave me a great tip just in terms of studying supervised machine learning, unsupervised machine learning. Mm-hmm. And so whether you have a model in mind when you're developing a model, you usually have like a research question in mind when you're gathering the features of your model for AI. Yeah. So if I want to know something about Leandro's uh, profile or people like with this demographic, uh, but I don't feed it the age criterion, the attribute of the model, a feature of the model. If I'm not feeding it the attributes correctly, it can't really learn. So there yeah. is sort of du- I'm directing and I control and govern a supervised model for AI. It has a direction and a purpose and a and an, and an objective or a research question. When you were saying, like, what if I just give you a big pool of data and just tell me what patterns you see in the chaos? That's a very different, like, that's harder and takes a much longer for an AI model to machine learning learn those patterns. Try to figure something out. I don't know what it is, but just tell me something interesting. Yeah. It's like, yeah. and, and you bring up a very interesting point, like having uh, correct tags, 
ways to identify what is what. Just and cleaning those. that data, like, because, you know, if you take production data, production data can be very noisy, very mm. dirty. So, like, and oddly, that can still be the human mind. Spend a lot of time cleaning data. But once you build the pattern and you build the model and you can apply the model, that's where the benefit comes in. And, and that is one of the functionalities that I have seen more often out there on the few or early performance tools that are saying like, hey, I have some AI. I'm going to analyze your results. I'm going to analyze what is out there and show you or tell you some insights into uh, what are your metrics, what, is that, what are the patterns that I see. Yeah. But the other that I was thinking with letting the machine learning roam around uh, utilization data, data and production... Yeah. It's a question that I often receive, like, hey, how do I design my load test? Oh, yeah. Having that input from, like, hey, machine learning, what would be a good mix for my load tests to represent production, to represent yeah. a busy day, to represent a spike moment? Yeah. You have the history yeah. of what has happened uh, before. A, t a troublesome period of time. Analyze that. And tell me what would be a cool what ramp What methods up? were being called? What queries were being called? How much data was being moved? What was the response time there that I'm trying to reproduce in the lab? Exactly. Oh, yeah. So workload analysis. Yeah, pattern yeah. analysis and the sign of uh, all the scenarios. Yeah. Because uh, I remember in the uh, old load runner days, I had like five different scripts. Yeah. How, what percentage would I give to each the one? The mix. The mix. Okay. That's another one that I think that the AI fed with enough uh, utilization patterns in production, yeah, yeah. we'll be like, oh, yeah, sure. Oh, right. do you want to test the Sunday? Okay, here it is. Or you yeah, want to yeah. test like an average monthly uh, good representation? Yeah. How about this? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that that transaction was did you it. Did you get questions? I got a few questions in, in, the, in the performance load testing class I, I did as well, which is sort of talking about um, the correlation, being able to correlate this response time Increase when is an increase in CPU and a decrease on the database, but it was an increase. So you're doing that distributed correlation mm -hmm. of a metric trend. Yeah. Also, pattern recognition that I think a machine learning model would do really well. And that's something we do as performance engineers. Like, well, what other metrics correlate closely to the pattern of increase or decrease. So inverse, is there an inverse correlation or a parallel, a linear correlation? Um, do, do, is there some metric that stopped at the same time this stopped over here? Are they correlated? And then the next step would be to prove that within some percentage, it's causal. Like you actually prove this thing that was calling this method called all of this CPU so you can find that actual causal chain across a distributed system. Which what? takes you from performance into the realms of observability. Analysis and yeah. observability. Yeah. And I, I do agree with you. Um, you reminded me, what was the analysis tool for LoadRunner? LoadRunner's analysis had some of those capabilities. Well, it was yeah. called Bubble Up Analysis. Shout out to Andrew and Bubble T. I had Bubble T. So <laughs> oh, LoadRunner Bubble that. Up yeah, Analysis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not drill, you don't, you're not drilling down into the chaos. You're bubbling up the most important thing. It was a brilliant <laughs> language. And that... And I went and had bubble tea last night for the first time. Oh, yeah. I, uh, we, we're going to do some coverage about that. Event. There's a whole thing. <laughs> I had no idea. There's a whole cult of, like, amazing Taiwanese bubble tea. Uh, be, be careful with that Taiwanese. There are some other nations that fight for that title. That's fine. Yeah. That, um, I'm not involved in that. All I know is <laughs> the bubble tea was, was good. You're not part of those communities. Good, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, so, some, some of these analysis, I remember... Um, Using these tools, I, I probably AI would be able to catch them better. When the CPU spiked up and hits 100%, it's not like one-to-one -one correlation at the same time right. that you see, let's say, timeouts. Yeah. The timeout starts to happen two minutes later for obvious reasons, because finally it triggered. Yeah, yeah. And I remember Loadrunner had a particularly hard time picking up on that correlation when there was like this, the, the facing the Delayed the, uh, uh, metric effect. correlation, yeah. I think AI would be better at... Yeah. Uh, well, back then, I mean, this was more than 10 years ago, was that a whole bubble, 15 years ago, maybe, bubble up analysis. That was just a correlation engine. So it was just looking for patterns, patterns but, not, but it wasn't really training a model the way you would create a data set mod feature. We weren't do really doing machine learning. It was more... Was more statistical? More statistical trend analysis, yeah, at that point, in, in, in terms of the engine. I'm not sure, to be honest with you, I'm not sure if they've done that. The now, gods and... But that'd be cool. Load runner, totally pay attention if you want yeah. to stay. <laughs> well, it's very cool. Me. Yeah. Uh, and 
some of some of the other questions that I was curious for your uh, tutorial, because how many times have you presented this tutorial? I've done it virtually like five times, and then this is the two times in the last two series. Times, yeah, uh, yeah. In, in real life. Yeah. What's the most common question that you get uh, in your tutorial? Um, it's really around performance requirements. I mean, it's still how do I take someone that's like, well, how fast do you want? Well, the system should be fast. What well, what's fast? fast? Well, how fast? Does it need to be faster than it was before? I mean, so it's still people still asking. And granted, this is a sort of an overview introduction class to performance and load and stress testing. Um, so you'll get people who were QA managers or just, just inherited the performance team mm -hmm. uh, or they're working with an outsource uh, partner. So they can, I, I totally expect it's like, these are the kinds of questions. How do I get started? Like, and I, I try to go back to our friend James Pulley. It's like, just ask a performance question. Mm -hmm. And the two answers or the two relevant answers I think people say are most valuable is let's talk about response time. And no matter what the context is, no matter even if it's, let's say, I input output on the disk, or if it's response time for a web request, or response time logging into an application, or response time, how much time was spent at 100% CPU, like all of the dimensions of performance have something to do with time. Yeah. And to be honest, functionality also has something to do with time. Mm -hmm. There was a beginning to this podcast That's a big debate. And it travels through time. If it's no, I mean like you and I just a few minutes ago started and we're, we are now traveling in time. In so, a straight, an unstoppable arrow right. of time. So we're always, <laughs> like I can always help people say, well, just start talking about what would happen, how slow would too, if it was too slow and you couldn't use a system, we're out of business. Well, game over, we're done. All right, so too, let's talk about what's too slow and then work our way back to, all right, well, you know, It's not just fast. It has to be three to four, three to four seconds. Because that, okay. that, that's the other way, uh, unnecessarily fast. There, there is like a, in SRE and chaos analysis, how many sigmas do you want? Uh, how much are you willing to spend on this? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's the other side. You just ma made me think of that. If you want it faster, it's going to cost it's, you. Yeah, exponentially. Yeah. Is it worth uh, it? Uh -huh. Up to I, which point? I think there may be a whole research. You know, in the in the in the dining cuisine space, mm -hmm. there's like slow food. Yeah, movement. like people are like, you're going to take four hours to eat this food, and you're really going to savor it. The succulent taste, the flavors, the ambiance, the camaraderie, the companionship. I think there's going to be slow websites as a resurgence, like a romantic. I. It took me four minutes to log into this website. It was so amazing. <laughs> it was the artisanal, handcrafted website that each login experience should be savored and unique. And, and then I opened my profile, and that took 14 <laughs> minutes. You just reminded me of so some of slow my... Slow tech. The, the first be, experiences on yeah, 14.4 BPS modems. A couple of people on 14.4... The image like was oh, progressive like loading of images. Yeah, I think there's going to be a renaissance, an experience of kind of slow <laughs> website. No, I'm totally kidding. So anyway, performance requirements, um, and the two, the other two answers are one, you can do a spreadsheet that says what are your most important transactions and how fast do you want them to go. So a matrix kind of spreadsheet is one way mm -hmm. to get started with that. The other question I got this time was, can we're an agile shop? We use user stories. So mm. performance as acceptance criteria in the user story. So what's a performance user story is another good answer that I think people liked. So we put in, all right, I need three second response time so that I can log into the site and do it. So when you're writing a performance story, a user story, you can start putting response time goals. And while there's 3,000 users on the site at the same time, so you can put the volume and usage And you can get a better performance context for the user story. So that's probably the biggest, biggest starter question. That and then we dive into all the tech and all the hardware and all of that. It's all fun. But I yeah, mean, mostly it's requirements. Performance requirements are still one of the first ones. So some of the fun talks around the hardware and bare metal and blah. Yeah. Uh, but it's funny that you brought up the the performance requirement what how fast is fast i got the same question yeah could you tell me what is the golden rule for response time how many seconds 
<laughs> and I was like, oh. Six seconds or less. Okay, let me, let me. Let, uh. Give me the answer, Leandro, so I don't have to think. Yeah. I don't, they don't, you don't pay me enough to think. Just tell me what it is. But just from that question, probably you can tell why I needed extra time eventually. Because that, uh, for that to really sink in, because some people are like, uh, yeah, I need a number. I want right. to know what is the golden rule. Yeah. And it's, uh, it depends. It's complicated. I, 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 I love that phrase, but I turned it backwards into this yeah. person that was asking. And I was like, okay, your car has multiple functions and performance things that you can measure on it. Yeah, yeah. What, was, what is a golden performance with response time that uh, would you like from your car? He was like, we know that what is like this number that people want for performance? Yes. Two seconds. They always go for two seconds. I don't know why. Yeah. And he said two seconds for my car. Oh, the brakes? Ah. Do you want the brakes to respond in two seconds? And he's like, uh, I know, I don't think so, right? When you're going 400 feet per second, that's 800 feet that before you even start putting the brakes on. Yeah. And that's, so, yeah, that's not good. And, and he's like, okay, so everything should be as fast as the brakes. And I'm like, now think about an oil change. Do you want it to be in two seconds? And he's like, I wish. Yeah, we all wish. That would wished. be nice. <laughs> but that's the Six Sigma thing that I was yeah. saying, how many Sigmas do you want? Yeah. Of course, on Formula One, cars can get an oil change in a few seconds. But how much do you have to spend to achieve that? I think, to be honest, in my experience, the coming up with any mathematical algorithm formula that makes you feel better about the number or the, the objective can have a bias in it because mm. if my objective is to know the formula, apply the formula, and then execute on that formula, right? The conversation about what formula you and I agree on and we use that gets us to think about the business, think about the end user, think about the system. Are we going to be successful? Will we make enough money? Will the system survive? Can we afford the hardware we need? Like, the conversation is the value. Yeah. The formula is just a describer. Of some that. guidance. It, some... It's, just, it's just a metaphor for the value of our conversation. Mm -hmm. So working together to build that formula and agree on what that number is, is more important than the number itself. Yeah. Like, I don't care if it's three or four seconds, but the fact that you and I had a really good conversation about what we're doing, why we're doing it, what's important, how much money can we spend, um, should we spend it here or there, that conversation is way more valuable to and me than the, than the formula itself. And another outcome from that conversation that you mentioned is that it generates awareness, not only exactly. among the people having it, but I see a manager like, oh, I understand, and I see where this is. I'm so glad we talked hey, about team, this. Look, uh, guess what I uh, learned yeah. or what I figured out? It wasn't yeah. you by yourself, but okay. Yeah. And that's the benefit. The, the whole organization starts to performance awareness because yep. I think that's another uh, yeah. problem. It's just like... Uh, that was the other one. Uh, in, in my tutorial, what is uh, the principle for automation... Uh, how to right away start automating in the blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, no, 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 it, no. It, it, You wouldn't guess otherwise. Tools. Everyone wants to know performance tools, all this other kind of stuff. So, yeah. There, there was something... Tools, that, tools, tools. I, I got shivers at the time that it was happening uh, <laughs> when, when I gave so them... So exciting. The, uh, okay, here's the networking tools on the developer tab. Uh, no, the developer tools network tab of your browser. And they started to analyze and like, hey, that looks slow. Hey, yeah. that is that. Your performance testing, you, are, you haven't automated, but yeah. you're already debating, talking. Maybe it's because, the, because we were take, te testing the Rosen Center uh, yep. web page. And we were looking at like, hey, this trans transaction, that is the reservations page. What is that refreshing? And they started to have those conversations. And I was like, oh, my God, yeah. shivers. This feels so you guys. pretty that exactly. they were. And they're just testing one user. On the browser, well, actually, if you had a room of 20 people, that's 20 users no, on the site. No, it was only one browser in the project oh, on the, the tutorial. It's okay, so you just had one. <laughs> you were still single user testing. Probably many other of them were opening they it in their own browsers, it, yeah. but... I usually tell people, like, open up your 
company's or your organization's mm-hmm. website, and they start analyzing, and then they start sharing. One of oh, them jumps God, right away, like, "Oh, oh, we have a problem here." Exactly, and I'm like, like, "Oh, oh, great. I gotta call somebody right now. This is really bad." You yeah. know what you're gonna say? Tell to your boss who sent you to this uh, tutorial that you already detected performance issues yeah. before you're even back into the organization. There was an interesting learning this week for me, which is just in the discussion. There's a lot of discussion around how to collaborate around performance. And the one thing that's nice about the single user dev tools or why slow uh, web page tests, right, has great stuff. Um, doing that single user analysis is usually static code analysis. Mm-hmm. It's not so much anymore. The dev tools are measuring over time, rendering dynamic uh, uh, activities, but it still sort of st- has a static code analysis for the patterns inside your application. It's, it's actionable in collaboration with your developer. And so that's kind of like if you're just starting doing performance testing, you maybe didn't build a relationship yet with your engineering team. So even if you start with single user testing, you didn't go off in the closet and do a load test and then come back and say, please try to understand everything I did that I did. You can collaborate on a single session and then say, okay, this is great. We optimized the site by three seconds. We shaved off this computation. The page loading is faster. It's smoother. It really looks good. Okay, now you're my friend, Leandro. Let's go, what if we now do this for load testing? What if we do multiple users? And the light bulb goes off. There was one good question because they were like, why are you so scandalized that the JavaScript waits one megabyte? And I'm like, yeah, because we're opening one user. Think about a thousand users. On the same server side. side. Yep. You you kill the network card probably with just those uh, users downloading. And it's not a single file. Yeah. And just before we close up, because looking at the time, looking at your time, you have a flight to catch. I have in to a catch few a minutes. flight or something. The like details. That. We don't care. <laughs> um, another question was like, "Hey, how do I know when that is heavy or not, or is big?" Or, and I uh, and and the, oh, it's like how fast is too fast? Yeah. How he- how, how, how you know big what is that compi- I component too big? Yeah, what? It depends. It depends. Because uh, uh, they, they, they saw me like going nuts about that image that was one megabyte IJPG in yeah. the main page. Yeah. And they're like, is that that bad? Yeah. And I'm like, again, it's the same situation. Yeah. But if you're a photographer and your web page has to have an 8K picture in the main page, it's justifiable. You are a photographer. You that want is the- your product. You want, people expect to see a rich image from the amazing photography work that's being done. Yeah. So exactly. on some circumstances, generally I say, please don't, don't, for the love of God, put a video in your main page. Yeah. But what if you're Netflix? What if you're, yeah, here's another one. If you are a COBOL consulting firm that works in mainframes, <laughs> your website should be a green screen that someone has to log into and oh. it's just function keys. So your website is a green screen terminal. I like that. Okay. There, you're welcome for that, that idea. Whoever, what company, that, that sounds right. oddly specific. But. So two shout outs to the history of performance in general. One, context driven. I have a whole bunch of talks around context driven testing, uh-huh. and uh, but the context driven performance testing, so contextual performance testing is exactly what you're talking about. It depends. Well, it's, it depends on the context. I would say all performance testing is context performance testing. Some of it is... Potentially not the way you approach some people. This is a standard website framework. I've, I've done nothing unique or original. I just implemented the same SAP that everyone else on the planet is okay. using. I just need to make sure it's going to work. And the minute Still you say, I just SAP. need to make sure it's going to work with my data, with our data. That is you're context. Like, but this is the context now is your data. So you, you call, you're right. You almost can't escape it. It's you get close to just like doing the same thing everyone else does. But you, then you almost got me there because I was like, SAP, yeah, you're right. Wait, wait, wait. what if it's a payroll process? And you have a different number of employees. Just and that. And it's inside of SAP. It can maybe standard, but yeah, you never. And, and, ask, and ask anyone that's implemented SAP. <laughs> every implementation, every configuration is completely different. Yeah. <laughs> those, those so yeah, I, I could see that. Maybe, maybe in hardware testing, maybe automotive like you test automotive and it's the same like model of car. They come off the line as cookie cutters and you're validating medical devices. They, but the context is, what if I take this medical device and use it in a different 
setting Sports, in this hospital, or hospital versus that hospital. This hospital has terrible air conditioning, so it's always hotter in every room. Or it's in the North Pole. Or yeah, your or your power is uh, not as reliable. It's slightly different voltage, or we get brownouts every now and then. Does the medical device still keep working? So there's still same device, but put it in the real world. The real world is context driven. Yeah, I I eventually I'm gonna corner you into performance. It always depends. It's my saying. I'm not putting it on Mark, but uh, it's something I think uh, we can debate. <laughs> you said you're <laughs> performance. It always depends. Everything. It always depends. Uh, exactly. Up to my perspective. Exactly. But speaking of depends, uh, before we say goodbye and you run off to your plane, I want to go back to your to boba flight. experience. To my flight. My boba experience. Yeah. Okay. Here's the other thing I never get. How do you get to boba? <laughs> you know what boba means? But what does it mean? Um, so when they created it, it's like little spheres. Yeah, the little spheres. And I think it's Taiwanese, or uh, what was the other country? Because I'm a- hard of hearing, so I kept hearing, is it bubble? No. Or boba? Boba. It's boba. boba. Like Boba Fett. Yeah, exactly that. Uh, I think Boba Fett is two Bs, but... Could bang. be. All right. Uh, it means boobs. What? Like breasts? Yeah. So That's unfortunate. Uh, uh, and it's a that's, war right? game. <laughs> that, that's misogynistic and terrible. I no. apologize. Because it's milk tea. Where does the milk come from? Okay, just stop We're yourself We're getting into right a weird now, place, I know. Beyond but that's, you need to put this video the out history to history of Boba and sadly professional I know. <laughs> masses of people. Of, okay, um, okay, so I get it. We're get, not saying anything wrong. I'm going to call it bubble tea. I, and that's fine. <laughs> Seems simpler to me. So, uh, but the I was confused at first because there's some of these, like there's mushroom teas where you allow a mushroom kind of thing to a grow. Kombucha, kombucha. It's like a totally different, but like it's like the sour mash or the um, like the starter for sourdough. Yeah, and like you you. It, Pass it down it for a generations, tea. like it's a yeast that grows for generations. Mm-hmm. Same kind of thing for this kombucha tea. Like you take a piece of the mushroom off and you start another one and it grows. And, and be careful like with that one. It's fermented. If you get enough, uh, you can get funky. You can get a little weird. Yeah, <laughs> don't do that. So what are you doing the rest? You have more. You have a talk or a panel the rest of this week? Yeah, here in uh, Star East. Um, so uh, we're going to miss our amigo Mark. Uh, I'm out. Getting out of here. But you have stuff going on. I'm stuck here. Well, not stuck. Having gladly stuck here. Tomorrow we're gonna have panels, interviews. Uh, I'm gonna be presenting a lightning keynote. Oh, cool. Uh, based on. Uh, okay. Um. This is gonna no be published spoilers. after the. No, event. no, no spoilers. This is not live. So, tacos. If you saw it, it's tacos. Tacos. M- lots of tacos and many other Mexican cuisine related. Exactly. Cool. Um, and but you're doing a panel discussion? We're going to have the performance testing panel. Cool. Uh, when this is published, go back into the Senor Performo ENG English and in the Perfights channel. Yeah, you're yeah. going to be able to see that, watch them in YouTube. Yep. What else do we have? Walking tours through the conference. Oh, so that they, right. you, I saw you posted that, yeah. Uh, people can uh, feel the experience as if they were here. This time I have a 360-degree camera. Probably the ones watching that have VR goggles might be an interesting experience to you feel like VR you're walking star- oh my gosh. at a Star uh, Conference. Wow. That would be a cool experience. I want to see if we can pull that I'm, up. I'm really comfortable in just 2D right now. Yeah. I mean, well, it's really, I'm traveling through time, so it's really three th- dimensions. Those pancakes two, and... Uh, two visual dimensions, but just you know, the third one is their style. What, what, was, what was the puppy things that you had last night? Oh, pancake puppies. Pancake puppies, yeah. So if you had, uh, I, the, there was, the hush puppies are a thing in the South, which is usually like honey with some kind of like a corn, it's, I think it's like a cornbread ball. Made out of I corn? I think. It, it's, it's some it's kind of donuts, dough. Donut dough. It's not, they uh, weren't do- like hush puppies weren't donuts though. Really? No, I, I don't were. think so. Uh-huh. There's some kind of another dough Corn but these thing? were like you take a pancake and and you cook it on one side, then you roll it in a ball, and then you keep cooking it. I have no idea how they mashed it. Because it was crunchy, right? On the if outside, crunchy, and the inside, it was like almost raw dough. As you can tell, we're having lots of uh, culinary experiences here That's in right. the conference exactly. as well. It was good. But it was at Denny's yeah. Diner, one of the finest establishments, right? Uh, I had no idea if you're on International Drive like this. There's one next there's door. There's so many restaurants down the strip that was going to get you. But anyway, 
pancake puppies. Try them. A cup of What's an interesting interest, uh, experience for the amigo Mark? Yeah. If the original uh, puppies are uh, made out of corn, probably I can have some of those gluten stuff. I, somebody's got to chime in. You know, if, if you know what know they are made problems. of and they are gluten free or gluten uh, friendly, please, please, They're please let me know. I look free. forward. I'm ready to trust. And they put them in an oil bat with stuff yum, that was yum, not gluten free. <laughs> so you're going to get some. If you have a severe allergy to gluten, don't don't go. Be there. careful. Yeah, that would be good. Um, cool. All right. Well, amigo, thank you so much for sharing some uh, perf babbling here and perf babbling. Uh, <laughs> I, I tend to do something like Batman. Everything is uh, perf this, perf that, perf something. Uh, it's fantastic. <laughs> hey, we need to give off our perf bite shoes. Perf bite shoes. Uh, Look at that. They're it's a real thing. Vintage. Vintage. Uh, collector's edition. They are collector's editions, exactly. Uh, um, as of the moment, there are no more. So, yeah. who knows? Check out check out more perf bites. Check out perf bites français. Have you tuned in? I don't speak French, but it looked like he was launching some stuff. And then Henrik's Is It Observable is doing... Um, Oh, he does a light. He does the is it observable a lightning rounds, lightning talks, which are cool. Uh, and then, of course, you have Senior Performo. Senor Performo, Perfect Español. Español, Perfect Español. Perfect. Senor Performo just published uh, the Prometheus book. If you want to learn a lot about Prometheus, uh, J Meter, the history behind the tool, how it was uh, brought up to the world, and yeah. who gave birth to it, and yeah. all the hair and details about that situation. Hey, do you have anything on the memer? Stuff. What is a Mimir? Graf- Grafana Mimir. Mimir. Uh, coming soon. Mimir is like a, a fork of Prometheus for the ones that do not know. Right. Extends some functionalities. But for uh, longer term storage. Fixes the longer multi tenancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. Uh, there are some things with Prometheus that uh, you have to. If you need multiple instances, it's a little bit messy. Right, Mimir right. fixes some of those things. But it speaks. And it speaks Prometheus. Yeah. So if you're if you know uh, how to talk to Prometheus, you can in quickly get it to work. From QL. It. Gotcha. They were, that's another thing where uh, oh, uh, some in. some people okay. um, have issues. Cool. One of them is. That's cool yeah. stuff. It's in his brain. Uh, it's not in my brain, but it, there it is. Getting there. But stay tuned. More more things are coming. Ah, Señor Performo, the channel, which is in Spanish, I'm bringing titles and subtitles in English, in German. And probably in Japanese. Auf so Deutsch? Yeah. All in the same channel? Subtitles. In the same channel. So, so you're going to be like Senior Performo Internacional. Her Performo and uh, Mr. Performo. Global Performo. Yeah. Global Performo. Uh-huh. I like that. Hmm. You heard it first here from Mark. I, I give him all the <laughs> credit. So awesome. we can keep babbling here. Uh, perf babbling. Uh, stay tuned. There's more Perfites coming. Henrik and I have some surprises coming soon. And uh, don't miss out. Perfites of Juanse, Perfites Español, Señor Performo, the Performacologist. We, we need more Performacologists. Uh, I've been going to college. I finished my college. Degree, yeah. So as I finish that and I get in the summer, we'll do stuff. I just met Maria mm-hmm. from Bright Test. So shout out to the Bright Test people. There may be some cool stuff coming because one of our one of our ideas in Performacology was an open source certification, community driven certi- certification, oh. which m- kind of fits with Bright Test and what they're doing. Yeah. So I, it was really great to meet her. Yeah, uh, there's going to be more adventures with the uh, Bright Test friends. That could be cool. Uh, oh, someone, see, I like it. You know. Might be in Berlin soon. And I only work with people I like. They are very likable people. Isn't that how life should be? Yeah. I think so. <laughs> Leandro, it's always good to see you, my amigo. My amigo, it's a pleasure, and I'm always happy that I see you around here in this conference. Keep coming to the conferences. You may meet in person awesome guys like uh, this friend, and have some much fun learning, performance babbling, perf babbling. Perf babbling. And I think with that, uh, Mark and Leandro out. We're going to call it a day. See yep. you in the next Perf Fights or and see you on the next uh, conference or star event uh, or whatever is coming soon. Wherever you're going to see us next. Ciao. We're, take care and uh, bye-bye. Adios. Hola. <laughs> Hola. Hola, live. Señor Performo. You heard it live. Hola.